This is a letter written from Sir Charles Darwin to Joseph Hooker, who was a friend and scientist. It was written in January 1844, which was 15 years before Darwin published his research on evolution through natural selection. My dear sir, must write to thank you for your last letter. I, to tell you how much all of your views and facts interest me. I must be allowed to put my own interpretation on what you say of not being a good arranger of extended views, which is that you do not indulge in the loose speculation so easily started by every smatterer and wandering collector. I look at a strong tendency to generalise as an entire evil. What limits shall you take on the Patagonian side? Has Dorbigny published? I believe he made a large collection at the Arnegro, where Patagonia retains its usual forlorn appearance, at Bahia Blanca and northward to the features of Patagonia, insensibly blend into the savannas of La Plata. The botany of South Patagonia, and I collected every plant in the flower, in flower at the season when there, would be worth comparison with the North Patagonian collection by Dorbigny. I do not know anything about King's plants, but his birds were so inaccurately habitated that I have seen specimen from Brazil, Tierra del, and the Cape de Verde island, all said to come from the, the St. Magellan. What you say of Mr. Brown is humiliating. I had suspected it, but could not allow myself to believe in such heresy. Fitzroy gave him a rap in his preface and made me very indignant, but it seems a much harder one would not have been wasted. My cryptogamic collection was sent to Barclay. It was not large. I do not believe he has yet published an account, but he wrote to me some year ago that he had described and mislaid all his descriptions. Would it not be well for you to put yourself in communication with him, as otherwise some things will perhaps be twice laboured over? My best, though poor, collection of the cryptogram was from the Konos Islands. Would you kindly observe one little fact for me? Were there any species of plant peculiar to any island, as Galapagos, St Helena or New Zealand, where there are no large quadrupeds, have hooked seeds? Such hooks, as if observed here, would be thought with justness to be adapted to catch into wool of animals. Would you further oblige me some time by informing me, though I forget this will certainly appear in your Antarctic flora, whether in Ireland, like St Helena, Galapagos and New Zealand, the number of families and genera are, largely compared, are large compared with the number of species, as happens in Coral Island, and as I believe in the extreme Arctic land. Certainly this is case with marine shells in extreme Arctic seas. Do you suppose the fewness of species in proportion to number of large groups in Coral Islands? is owing to the chance of seeds from all orders getting drifted to such new spots, as I have supposed. Did you collect seashells at Caruglian Island? I should like to know their character. Your interesting letters tempt me to be very unreasonable in asking you questions, but you must not give yourself any trouble about them, for I know how fully and worthily you are employed. Besides a general interest about the southern islands, I have been now ever since my return engaged in a very presumptuous work in which I know no one individual who would not who would not say a very foolish one. I was so struck with distribution of Galapagos organisms and with the character of the American fossil mammifers that I determined to collect blindly every sort of fact which could bear any way on what a species. I have read heaps of agricultural and horticultural books and have never ceased collecting facts. At last gleams of light have come. And I am almost convinced, quite contrary to opinion I, I started with, that species are not, it is like confessing, confessing a murder, immutable. Heaven forfend me from Lamarck, nonsense of a tendency to progression, adaptations from the slow willing of animals. The conclusions I am led to are not widely different from his, though the means of change are wholly so. I think I have found out, his presumption, the simple way by which species become exquisitely adapted to various ends. You will now groan and think to yourself, on what a man have I been wasting my time in writing to? I should, five years ago, have thought so. I fear you will also groan at the length of this letter. Excuse me, I did not begin with malice prepense. Believe me, my dear sir, very truly yours, C. Darwin.